What's up everybody, it's your boy Fogey here with another video. Uh, this time I'm taking off the shell of my Nintendo Switch Pro Controller, putting on a new one. Uh, the screwdrivers you need are all going to be Phillips, so pretty easy, common to find. They're going to start off taking those two screws at the bottom and take that shell off. And then that back plate there has about four screws we'll need one to take out. Just going to take those off, lay them out nice and simple. Then once you take this back shell off, you're going to see the battery. You're going to see a couple other screws. Take that battery out. You're going to see that screw at the bottom of the battery that was hidden. And there's going to be two shoulder screws over there. And I'm going to take those out right about now. And where I mess up is there's two other screws that I don't see. They're kind of deep hidden towards the top of the controller. Need a longer Phillips to get that one out. I'm struggling because idiot boy forgot to take those screws out. And so I'm going to mess with it for a little bit. I'm going to realize, oh wait, I can't just pry this open. Don't pry the controller open. It's You're going to break those ribbon cables. Do not pry it open. I finally get the long Phillips there. Get that out. And get that one more out. Now I can pry it open and get everything taken care of. So here we go with the prying action there. Do that slowly because there's a ribbon cable that's attached to it. You kind of lift that little tab up and slide it out. Be careful. Don't break that cable. Now we're putting the buttons back in. The buttons actually have a little pattern like little pegs on them. So you can't put the wrong button in the wrong place. So just slide those in place like so. Now we're going to take the shoulder buttons and stuff off. You can take the ribbon cable out. I don't suggest doing that. It makes it a little more difficult than it has to be. I just take everything out, transfer all the insides over to the button area, and then the shoulder area, we're gonna slide that in a second. So I'm getting those pads and everything lined up. Once we put the D-pad in, the home button, uh, the plus minus button, all that goodness right there. And now that's lined up. Now I'm gonna take the shoulders, slide that in place. And I'm gonna put the screws back in for that in a second. Now with these screws, do not over tighten them because if you crack that board, you just lost 60 bucks and you go buy another controller. So key tip, my most important point I can't stress enough, take your time when doing this repair because I'd rather you be a little slow and do this the right way than break your stuff and be mad because you rushed it. So yeah, you wanna get in there, don't over tighten like I said before. If you hear like a pop or a little like, like cringy sound, stop, you're tightening it too much. Now you're gonna line those up there. Now this is the hard part. You wanna put that ribbon cable in and line that up perfectly. If you don't line that up, you're gonna have to keep opening and closing and opening and closing and opening and closing the controller again until you get it just right. Because if you don't map those buttons right, if you don't get that cable in right, you gotta, those buttons aren't gonna be mapped properly. And now here's the reassembly part. You're just gonna take all those screws and put them back in place. Um, what I like to do when I take things apart, I put the screws out kind of in the in the fashion where they look like they're on the inside of the controller. That way I know or this is that corner, this is that corner, this is that corner, this is this section, this is this section. That way I look at my screws and see, okay, this is where they lay out and go in on the controller. This part's pretty easy, just screwing them back in. Now the most important part is you want to test the controller out. Um, as you can see, still getting those over with. Now for the testing phase, I would recommend taking your controller before putting the battery back in and plug it into your switch and make sure all the buttons are right, but we'll get to that later in the video. So right now, I'm just putting everything back together, screwing it in. Again, don't over tighten stuff, you break it. You still use it at this point because you didn't crack the board or anything, but you might just have a loose screw and uh, nobody wants to have a loose screw in a controller, that's for sure. So yeah, this part's pretty just simple, so I'm just gonna be quiet. Nolo means quality. Typically I do the testing of the controller before I screw everything back in and I even keep the battery out. Um, I typically just plug it into the USB-C cable, plug in my switch and turn it on that one. I highly recommend when you do a shell replacement after before you do uh, close it up, if you have a fighting game on your switch, load that up because typically fighting games do test out all your buttons and it makes it easier to tell if it's working the right way or not. 
player two side, so I'm just gonna do some movement. So using the analog stick, I'm gonna get the clicking in the background. Yeah, all right, the directions are working. You can see that little indicator over there. Using the D-pad, do the same thing. Good. Now to test the other buttons. So a light, medium, heavy works. Well, flash. Regular switch. Assist button works. Assist direction works. Yeah. One thing that can happen if you do not have your um, ribbon cables slid in properly. I've mentioned this earlier in the video that your buttons might not map properly. So the lower ribbon cable that actually comes out controls the A, B, X, Y buttons. So the first time I did a controller shell replacement, I actually didn't put the cable in properly. And because I didn't do that right, uh, my X and Y buttons were useless, but my A and B were fine, but they were doing the X and Y function. So my key points for this, take your time, don't rush it. it you're gonna take a little bit of time. There's a lot, there's not a lot of screws, but there's a lot of small parts. I'd rather you take a lot of time to do this right the first time and have to keep on reopening the device and causing potential damage. Don't want to be that guy that breaks your own controller after spending 60 bucks on it. So, yep, that's been the shell replacement for the Nintendo Switch Pro Controller. Um, rather simple thing to do, just take your time and do it right. Once you get that mastered, you're good to go. Um, I'll link the shells that I've used before in the, in the description below. Uh, hopefully I'll see you guys next video. You guys take it easy.